welcome to the Red River Valley of North Dakota. A land flowing with milk and honey. You're watching Beat Farmin' Mitch. Good morning, people of YouTube. We're hanging in there, we're trucking along. Sugar Beet Harvest is almost coming to a close. We've been ripping pretty strong for about 12 or 12 days now, something like that. So it's 1 a.m. and it is time for me to get up and go to my shift. And so for this video, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give an update every hour as to how the shift is going and what I'm up to. So basically, my shift starts at two and I'm gonna give an update every single hour of the entire beet shift of my day. I'm Beet Farm and Mitch and I'm a family farmer up in the Red River Valley of North Dakota. My family and I um, have been farming up here for many years. So I work with my two older brothers, my dad and my uncle, and we all kind of mutually have our times and roles on the beat shift, and my, I'm gonna go switch with my brother. Uh-oh. Sugar beet harvest for us runs 24 hours a day for like two weeks or a little bit more, two to three weeks until we're completely done with sugar beet harvest. And so we run 24 hours because it takes a long time to harvest sugar beets. It doesn't happen overnight. Well, it does when you run 24 hours. <laughs> and so my shift might be from two to two, but usually we end up working different hours and working longer just to kind of keep the whole ship sailing. Get my stuff together, see you in the field. You can see we got these blinking lights on our corners. That's so our drivers, truck drivers know where to turn out. It kind of gets hard to tell at night sometimes. Well, I just got out to the field here. You can see one of the trucks is leaving loaded. And we got sugar beets here. So my brother Jason and my uncle Ernie run the day shift and then my brother Casey and my dad and I were on the night shift. And so we're a family farm and so we all kind of just take a spot and kind of make it work the best we can. And you know, just because our shift is quote two to two, it doesn't mean we work from two to two. Uh, usually we have to stick around longer to kind of make sure things flow smoothly. And it's always a little bit of a mystery. It's fun showing up and seeing how far they got. And sometimes they get a lot done. Here's Casey. Morning. Well, they got moved here anyway. Yeah, they did. I'm glad to see that. We dig on this opening till we hit the flag. And then we gotta make an opening over here on the yep. other side of the plane. Yep. I'm gonna switch with Jason when he gets him loaded. Back in action. The 2 a.m. hour of the shift. Holy cow, it's 3 o'clock and I haven't even had a cup of coffee yet. We've been so busy loading trucks, we haven't been able to stop much. Which is a good problem to have. Better make it snappy. From two to three, that goes pretty quick, because that's when I, my brother Jason hops out of here and I hop in, and that seems to go pretty quick. Three o'clock hour also seems to go pretty quick, so cheers. Mm, there's nothing quite like the first sip of coffee in a day. Just nice and warm and oh, it's the spot. It is now the four o'clock hour. This is always the worst time for a breakdown, if it happens. Or hang it in there. Everything's been running smooth and things are going good. Little squeak on the tractor though. I think we got a tensioner arm on an engine belt going out, so we'll have to get that fixed. Up to snuff. And the Ferris wheel's not full of mud back here. You gotta crowbar that out pretty frequently, but Jason keeps her pretty clean. Check some chains. <laughs> Looks good. You don't want it too tight, but you also don't want it rubbing on the metal, so that seems pretty good. I thought it felt pretty cold out. There's definitely a little bit of frost on the leaves tonight. It's a clear night. Usually when it's clear, there's a higher chance of frost because the clouds aren't insulating the earth. And so we don't want our beets to freeze. As long as the tap roots don't freeze, we're okay. If there's some frost on the leaves, that's not a problem. Uh, but you don't want the roots to start freezing because if you put those in the long-term storage, they can respire and heat up and cause something called hot spots in the stockpiles and then you get spoilage and we don't want spoilage. And then it's gonna get hot tomorrow. Hopefully we don't get shut down for heat. There's kind of a sweet spot. You know, you want the beetroot temps to be between 33 degrees and, th and 55 degrees. If we start getting over that 55, we'll have to shut down because you can't put warm beets in a pile either. So there's kind of a middle sweet spot and honestly the temperature has been perfect since this stockpile harvest has started. It's kind of been right in that, you know, 30 degree lows and 55 degree highs. Oh, well, we're in the five o'clock hour now and 
This is usually when I start getting pretty tired. But we've had a good line of trucks. The trucks have been moving along, so that's good. I'd rather stay up all night and keep hammering than start dozing off at 5 a.m. So, might as well have another cup of coffee. The Grandpa Joel. He was my grandpa. And he would have been our fourth generation farmer. There was three Franks, and then my Grandpa Joe, and then my dad, now me, and my brothers and my uncle. Bum, bum, bum. Six o'clock. Sun should be coming up before too long. The sun is coming up. The seven o'clock hour. And it is calm out here. Beet harvest usually isn't this calm. Since it's starting to freeze a little bit, I figured we might as well just keep the topper close. Those leaves help insulate it, so those help prevent both frost and both too much heat. So if it's really warm, we'll want to stay close to our topper like this, and if it's starting to freeze, we'll also want to stay close to our topper like this. So we'll kind of have both ends today. Kind of cool at night, and today it's supposed to get pretty warm, so we're gonna probably be doing this all day. The rule of thumb for a frost is you want to be a stone's throw away from your topper. Turn the old brightness up. Oh, my knee hurts. I smoked it yesterday greasing the harvester. Pour me another cup of coffee. Just like that, eight o'clock. Hey, we're halfway, technically. I like on the radio whenever they interview like a local farmer or something, they ask him how it's been going. But anyway, a guy named Tom Canelli, he was just on there. He was talking about the sugar beet crop this year and how it's phenomenal yields. And part of that is due to the strong seed genetics that sugar beets bear nowadays. It is amazing. Like it's amazing to hear how much more tons of sugar we have nowadays and just, you know, the crop that we have this year is very solid and due to seed genetics. But anyway, I thought that was pretty neat and it's very true. Stay close to your toppers to prevent a heat shutdown. It's crazy how such a tiny little sugar beet seed can make such big beets. Mustard seed. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen plus hours on a beet shift. And another field done. Just on the old morning commute. Not a lot of traffic. And we're at the next field unfolding. So it's time for my 10 o'clock lunch. You know, I like to eat lunch in the mornings when I'm on the night shift. And yes, it does involve a pack of saltines. So in one of my recent episodes, I asked what your favorite canned food is, or like your favorite canned snack or whatever, something kind of peculiar and odd, you know? And someone said kipper snacks, and I'm like, oh, that sounds really good right now. So we're having some herring fillets, kipper style. Should have brought a little packet of mustard with. It may not look very good, but by golly, is it delicious. That'll keep a sailor alive. And don't forget your 11 a.m. snack. These things are the best potato chips to ever exist. North Dakota and Minnesota potato chips, they are the best. They are the real deal. They literally taste like you just got done frying them up in your garage. They're awesome. Mm. It's noon and I'm out of snacks. We are in the final leg of beet harvest. We can count the final acres. Truck after truck after truck after truck. Let's just keep rolling, baby. I like it. I can still smell the kipper snacks in here. Well, it's one o'clock and Jason's gonna be on shift here in an hour. He's out here doing stuff. I mean, we always show up early and stay late for our shifts, but I usually start greasing before he comes in here so it's ready. Especially if there's no trucks, it's nice to do it. So if it is really busy and we can't stop, then it's good to go. If you watch my winter video about my sugar beet harvester clinic, we got a custom grease gun holder on here, a custom scraper holder and custom oil jug holder. Pretty custom. That's not factory from Artsway. Kind of a lot to grease on this thing. The drive shaft probably has 20 grease zerks on it. There's a few upstairs. 
These doors probably all have about six or seven or eight of them in there. A couple under the middle there. Paddle shaft bearings, and there's some under the hitch. Row finder, self-leveling. There's a few. Well, the belt's not ripped up. That's always good to see. Couple up there, every single one of those bearings has one. This is usually when you find a bearing out if one is out, so it is important to keep up on greasing, keeps the bearings from going out, and if there is one out, you see it. If you can't hear it, you can see it. We're ready for them. Holy cats and dogs, you know what they say, time flies when you're having fun. Oh, looks like it might be shift change. Looks like Jason's coming. We're going on shift change, how you feeling? I feel like a hundred bucks. We're getting there, yeah. Couple, couple days. days. Right there you go. Go. We made the swap. So how'd she go today, Andy? Oh, it was great. What do you like about haul driving beat truck? Like listening to all the all the loud diesels. It just it makes me happy. And then the sunrise is great too. For that, that's my favorite part as well, for sure. So how'd things go for you today, Casey? Well, pretty good. I think it's our last night shift. I don't even know how many days we've been going for right now. Have to figure that out later, but we're getting to the end. Holy smokes, there's some beats here. Big crop. This is kind of good to know how to measure this stuff. How'd you find that? Find out about that app? Well, I'm out measuring field acreage and Casey just taught me how to do this. So we're figuring out acres for how many beats we need to leave. Time to weld some stuff. We got a patient coming in. Finally on the way home. But man, here we are. We're gonna hopefully wrap things up tomorrow. We can dig a few more acres and we'll see what comes to fruition. But of course, thanks for joining this beet harvest. This is Beet Farmer Mitch and don't forget to keep it sweet. Mm -hmm.